As of today, November 1st, 2021, there is nothing new to report in the Summer Wells case. What I'm going to try to do is give a factual summary of what we know thus far. 6-15-2021, Summer Wells went missing from 110 Ben Hill Road in Rogersville, Tennessee. The time of the call was around 6.26 p.m. Both parents called. The first story that we understood was Summer was last seen outside of her home around 6.30 p.m. On 6.17, the TBI was doing an interview and they said that the dad's criminal record was not irrelevant. The dad, Don Wells, on 6.18 did an interview. He discussed how they taught Summer to stay on the property and he absolutely did not believe she would leave on her own. He thought that the basement door was unlocked and that a bad person grabbed her. He mentioned the resurrection, which led people to believe that perhaps her parents had something to do with this. On 621, the TBI updated and said the FBI card team was involved. This screen here is just a summary of some of the things that news, timesnews.net did. Uh, Jeff Bobo with timesnews.net, he's really followed the case closely and given information. So if you want some factual information, you can go to that website to follow along with her case. 624, Don Wells does another interview. His criminal history and that of his son is discussed. He was asked if he wanted to discuss it, and he said it's in the past. Let's leave it there. Don had been arrested in October of 2020 and charged with domestic assault while under the influence. His wife did drop the charges, but he pled guilty to owning a handgun. 624, there was a press conference, and they talked about how every bit of information that they've got has been checked, surveillance, videos, photos, etc. On 628, Candace Wells spoke. Everybody familiar with the case knows exactly what Candace said. They were planting flowers. Summer went into the house. She went to the basement. By the time her mother came to look for her, she was gone. Allegedly, her three brothers saw her go down to the basement. Of course, their children. Nobody has spoken to the children. We don't know how accurate that is. We do know that Sheriff Lawson did not believe that it was an abduction, but Candace Wells says, I feel in my heart, somebody came up here and took her. They lured her away from here. Whoever has my daughter, I pray they haven't harmed her and that they bring her back to us safe and sound. Candace has not changed her story except for the timeline of events. She says first two minutes, then 10 minutes, and then she later says she doesn't really keep track of time. The issue of Summer's hair was something major on social media and they wanted to know why she had very short hair or shaved hair. You can pause these and read them for yourselves to understand better why the parents say that this occurred. Whether it is true or not, we do not know. As for social media, they addressed the rumors and the hate that they were getting on social media. This was in response to a question that the reporter asked them. There has been a lot of hate against the Wells family. Uh, some of the things posted under the children's pictures and under the parents' pictures on social media, those are things that I really can't even begin to repeat. 625, a family friend, David Dotson, spoke to WJHL. He says, quote, mom is devastated. Mom does not want to leave the house. She feels if Summer comes back and she happens to wander back up, she wants to be there, end quote. David took the children out to go golfing to get them away from the situation. He was soon crucified by the people online, saying he looks very suspicious. He's since backed away. On 6-26-21, the TBI and law enforcement issued a statement about a red truck. 1998-2000, to 2000, maroon a red to a Toyota Tacoma with a full bed ladder rack along with white buckets in the truck were seen near Beach Creek Road in Ben Hill the 14th or 15th. This has remained outstanding. Nobody has come forward saying that they know the owners of said vehicle. 
Speaking of 110, 110 Ben Hill Road off of East Creek, should be the first residence on your ride. Reference to a missing four year old. The parents have called in as I was, but the mother had went for a walk, came home, now they can't find her. They've been yelling for her. She's been gone for about 10 minutes now. In response to that 911 dispatch call, the parents were asked, and Candace replied, I don't go on walks around here or runs because I'm scared of the bears, the snakes, and the coyotes around here. She had also said in an earlier interview clip that she was a, she was away outside of her home for just two minutes, and then Summer was no longer in the house. It's unclear why dispatch thought Summer was four years old, uh, one of the parents likely said four instead of five. On 63021, the behavior panel, they're on YouTube, you can go look them up, had a language analysis done on the interview that Candace and Dawn did. They saw some red flags but said, we're mostly seeing truth. And I say, if they're lying to us, wow. So they really did not feel like there was a lot of deception between Candace and Dawn in the interview that they did. On 7-2, there was a discussion and a post on the reward fund, and it was at $37,350, and there was a stipulation that if no tips or any credible information came in to recover Summer Wells or locate her, that the money would go to the Child Advocacy Center in Moshim. On 7-3, Senior VP of the Children's Services for Frontier Health, Tim Perry, says the disappearance is weighing heavy on the Wells family, especially the three older brothers. He advised that the community unite to help the Wells family cope with this trauma instead of spreading negativity online. Unfortunately, I don't think many people took his advice on that. On 7-9, Ronnie Lawson, the sheriff, says there is no person of interest. Everybody is a suspect now. Everything's on the table. The main focus is to find Summer to bring her home, whichever way it goes, with a suspect or she's lost in the woods or have been abducted or whatever. Everything is on the table. He said he felt like a lot of the tips are coming from social media and people feel like they know what's going on, but... It's starting rumors and it's not helpful. On 724, Summer's brothers were removed. Don Wells spoke to a YouTube channel and leaked that, and then he did an interview. And he said that the children had, in fact, been removed, that things were dangerous there. He got drunk, he flipped out due to rumors, and he started drinking, and they took the children away. Whether that reasoning is true or false, we do not have access to CPS reports, so we don't know. On 726, a YouTube channel called The Interview Room spent time with Candace Wells. She opened up to him and allowed him to come inside her home. The home became a huge topic of discussion due to its unkept nature. This became a focus for weeks and still is on social media. She did say a few things that were concerning, such as she had locked the doors, no one in, no one out, but she couldn't recall if the basement door was locked the day Summer went missing. The Midwest EquiSearch team did go down and search for Summer twice. They were down there. They spent several days each time. Unfortunately, as great as that organization is, they were not able to find anything in the search for Summer Wells. One thing that we did hear were about um, the dogs that were used, and I'm unsure if it was EquiSearch, but we did find out at that around that time that there was a hit going down a trail out onto the road. On August 11th, the TBI and the sheriff said things are not over. Uh, everyone is still a suspect. There are, you know, everyone's a person of interest but they are very intensely looking into it. But they had been silent for quite some time, which is why he released that statement. On 9-15, again, another statement. 
They don't have any updates to provide other than to say that the investigation remains active and ongoing. Agents and detectives with the Hawkins County Sheriff's Office continue to work daily to understand what happened to Summer Wells. Credible information only should re be reported to 800 TBI find. They've received around 1,200 tips in the search for Summer. 92921 John Walsh show John Walsh did do a sh short segment on summer and that helped to get her face out to you know millions of more people which is a wonderful thing but even with that nothing has come forward as far as we the public know that is credible enough for the TBI or Hawkins County to act upon on 10-7, the behavior panel went and met with Don Wells. My understanding is they met in Kingsport, Tennessee. I'm unsure how accurate that is, and you'll see why in a second. The overall conclusion was that Don was being truthful. They said he had a few red flags, but they do not seem to feel that Don was involved with Summer's disappearance. However, they did feel like he had some deception when it came to the things he said about his wife. November 2021, Dr. Phil, who is somewhat connected with the behavior panel, did interview Candace and Dawn, and they will appear on Dr. Phil sometime in November of 2021. That's why I said I didn't know if the behavior panel happened in Kingsport, as been reported, or if it happened on the set of the Dr. Phil show. Either way, it's irrelevant. You can go find the interview with the behavior panel on YouTube, and we will be waiting for a date for Dr. Phil. Social media has been huge in Summer's case. There are 16 groups with hundreds of thousands of people in them on Facebook, and there are hundreds of videos on the Summer Wells case with hundreds of thousands of views. Along with that, of course, brings issues and negativity. Uh, some of the people on social media uh, very much against the parents and um, you know <laughs> it's an opinion so um, a group of creators I did want to mention this and their subscribers raised over $31,000 to go to the Summer Wells Reward Fund and a few others on social media raised money to pay for a billboard that's currently in Kingsport Tennessee so even though uh, the overwhelming majority from what I've seen from the people who are vocal and or posting comments are they feel negatively about the parents and the involvement because you know her mother was the last person to see her um, what I what I want to say is that in this video I've only tried to put in what we know to be true I've tried to avoid the rumors and speculation and I ask that others do the same who come to this channel. Whether you do believe or you don't believe that her parents or one or her grandmother, whatever, whatever you may believe, you are entitled to that belief. But as creators on social media, we do have somewhat of a responsibility to try to put out factual information when we can. Of course, there's going to be speculation. We've just got to be careful in where we're leading our audiences. Sometimes people really can't tell the difference between your opinion and your speculation and something that should be reported. For them to have received 1,200 tips, mainly from social media, as they've stated, that comes from somewhere. What are they listening to? What are they seeing? What are we as creators giving out to people on social media for them to be making and jumping to these conclusions and taking up valued time from law enforcement? Now, that's not to say that if you really feel something is credible, you shouldn't report it to the TBI. You 100% should because somebody knows something. Somebody knows something out there. This baby is missing still, four months later. And there are thousands of people who care. 
someone knows something and they need to come forward.